Hello, everyone. I see you're still alive. No one in food coma? I can see some sleepy people in the back. If you're snoring, I'm coming after you. Be careful. I'm not that nice, because um, I come from Transylvania. So if you heard there are some vampires around that, I had my lunch, so you are safe for the next hour. I don't respond to later on. My name is Jana Kioran. I intentionally misspell it because it's fine. Nowadays, it's fine to call me Luana, Yona, Iona. I will try to reply to it if I recognize it. If not, ping me again and for sure I reply. I am a project manager right now, freshly entered this world. Uh, previously, I've been a community team lead and uh, in the QA, which is quality assurance domain. And I still do that for the community inside Cognizance of Vision, which is an outsourcing company in Cluj-Napoca. I do a lot of volunteer and I also have a contract uh, role with Mozilla. Uh, besides the testing side that I do there, I also volunteer as a tech speaker. You probably see Milika first waking us up with a great talk about WebAssembly. And uh, I also do some kind of teaching code to kids through European Commission. I really try having this digital skilling uh, from early ages to them so they have a better chance. You can find me on Twitter at Yuan underscore cheese, and I sometimes tweet funny things with the hashtag life of a Mozillian. What are we going to talk today? I just posted some titles, very confusing one. Um, we'll start to understand why we needed this talk, why we needed to learn testing going back to mobile browsing, and afterwards we'll see how many apps are too many. I'm really curious how many you have on your device. Uh, I will try to teach you a bit of uh, zero waste um, knowledge, but not for the nature or the garbage or the households, more like in the digital life. And of course, we never stop learning. And we are looking for the future because it's going to be a bright one. So why are we having this talk in general? Why are we having this uh, situation right now? Because internet is out there and probably because you're developing for the web around here, you know that it's not going to go anywhere. So um, Mozilla, together with the mobile team, looked always who are the user, who are we addressing. Our mission is to give everyone a chance to access the internet freely. So of course, when we started the mobile browsers, we were really passionate about bringing the mobile web towards them. So we created around almost 10 years ago, a mobile version of uh, Firefox, the cute animal around. And uh, we wanted to give them a fair experience on the mobile for the users, not only on the desktop. Firefox has a really cool um, growth on desktop, I would say. It grew up and been a very adult product, I would call it. So we wanted to give a fair chance to the mobile user too. But even more, uh, even if you spend some time looking at the numbers, we realize that the future will bring more and more devices. We are not talking only on the phone, everyone, everyone having a smartphone around it. Maybe some of you already talked to your fridge or, I don't know, TVs. Um, I'm not yet there because I'm a bit um, freaked by those, I would say, till I find a secure way. But definitely something that we need to look for and prepare for it. Don't worry, I'm not going to invade anywhere. This is uh, my necklace at the Cluj Festival music. But I wanted to say that the new markets out there, we should definitely give them a chance to. We are not talking only about internet in powerful countries in Europe or in North America. We are looking also at those who have less connectivity and less access to devices. And besides the geographical one, I will also want to give a chance to those who start into entering the web through the mobile devices. Like my parents won't have a desktop anymore, unfortunately. They start using the internet on the mobile phones directly. So teaching my mom how to use Firefox on desktop will definitely not be the case, but I do have to teach her how to do it on her smartphone or already. I mentioned babies. I don't think babies need devices, but definitely the new generation, I heard it's called Alpha, will be with a device in their hands faster than I was um, Probably at 10, 15, when they are programming now, we're still playing around. But I had a happy childhood, so I was fine. And yes, everybody in the end, as I mentioned, new devices are coming, and um, we cannot escape it. Even if you're talking on a full browser or just a view of it, we will definitely need to be ready for browsing. 
And I mentioned like 10 years ago, we decided to have this cute browser. Who remembers the Nokia Maemo devices? No. Me, am I the oldest one in the room? I see you. You were nothing. I'm not. I'm still young. Or the Migo devices. So back then, I'm sorry for the quality of the image. This is what I found online to represent it better. Uh, we call it Fennec because it's a cute fox with large ears. Yet we have this tendency for foxes. And it was first launched on Nokia device, devices, uh, N900, I think it was. Of course, it was slide with a keyboard. Old school people, yeah, me, me included. And uh, soon after, like two, three years, we ditched the MyMO system, was not that adopted, and we dedicated ourselves mostly to Android. We had a little battle with iOS. You kind of know these things. They don't want to let us do the browser as we want. We don't want to go on their side. But we kind of get to a pact in 2015 that we agreed to use their theoretical part to implement our browser. So since then, we do have it for iOS too. In, um, especially around the time 2015, it moved from being developed on Zool to native UI. And also last year, we decided that we cannot go with our WebView. It kind of kept us behind. And we adopted the Geeko View for all our uh, products. I wrote the three characteristics. I don't want to look at them very negatively, but bulky it was. It had so many features. Even if you enter the settings time, it will take like 20 minutes to find what you needed to change. It had all the add-ons in the world because who would not uh, want some flowers on their mobile browser? Who even see those? A lot of plugins, a lot of things supported. We had developer tools for mobile also. So as you can see, it was pretty hard to maintain. It took us a lot of data and uh, especially a lot of space in the devices. As I mentioned, I'm one of those that curates everything. I, took, I take a lot of pictures. I post half of them on Instagram. And um, that doesn't allow me a lot of space for having 100 applications, especially large ones. For the developer side, because we are at a de developer conference, the archaic process that keeps Fene going is not something that anyone wants to maintain right now. We have, uh, you will see, we'll have uh, everything now standardized more nicely. So, let's see. This is a quiz time. How many apps is too much for you? Like, I don't know, 50? Yes, no, hands? Yes? Less than 50. Yes, thank you, you saved me, something like that. Okay, so you have, is anyone having more than 100 applications on their phone? Hero. Seriously, good, good. Um, I think you're managing better your storage than I am, to be honest. So this is how many Mozilla, uh, application Mozilla has right now in Play Store only on Android. I didn't took a photo of the iOS Play, like iTunes, because it's still there too, but this for me felt a way too much. At least half of them are browsers, where I think more than half of them are browsers. So you kind of get that it was hard to maintain such a structure without having something in common, right? I see that somebody was like, oh, is that by Mozilla? Yes, so many. So the zero waste approach in um, digital life will be to refuse what we don't need. We don't need colorful themes for a mobile application because we better see the, the Chrome UI. So we don't need that. Refuse it from the beginning. The mobile browser doesn't need to have uh, a lot of developer tools uh, or a lot of settings for um, add-ons. Um, you barely use, I use one to five uh, add-ons for mobile, so not that many spaces to add them, not that um, more of details. So we reduce the amount of things you can do online, not do, use online. The most important R in this situation is we started to learn what we can reuse, having around six browsers, mostly doing the same, opening a web from the internet, a web page from the internet, will um, not be helpful if you have to implement yet again the code. And if you want to change something, because let's face it, uh, things change nowadays in, um, in our online life. So we need to keep up with that. Changing in six places differently, it's a pain. 
and not want to say where. Repurposing use is not very useful here because uh, simply it meant that you just reuse the thing like this beautiful house, home of the conference. Uh, probably was uh, an industrial hall, of, uh, kind of like that, and now it's a really beautiful place for this conference. Um, on the digital side, on the mobile application, it was very hard to do it, so, but I wanted still to mention for you to know it. And last but not least, recycle. Whatever you don't need, take it out, give it to other people that might use it, and just forget about it. So in, two in 2018, the um, mobile team from Mozilla sat down and adopted this zero waste uh, style. I'm just using it because it's trendy nowadays with the zero waste lifestyle. Um, especially they wanted to understand that after they created Focus, it was hard to maintain every branch implementing the same uh, innovation or the same changes without affecting uh, the time of the developers or having more time needed. So when they saw that we are still rebranching, we're creating new browser, we're creating new stuff, they had to implement something that they helped them um, gain time and gain knowledge uh, and use it in the right way. It's more like if you're into the product area, it will be something to first try the idea, do a prototype of it, see if it goes well, and if yes, adopt it and push it towards your all systems. So as I mentioned, they decided to do this and uh, they created the timeline for the adoption, the changes, especially they based all the shifting from the old type of products to Android components and building new browsers on top of that. Having a browser dedicated for uh, privacy only will just need you to load the page, have a safety net there and do the work. Having a browser for Indonesian market, it needs to be fast, very simple because they don't need to load much stuff. They don't have uh, that powerful internet connection and uh, just pick exactly what you need. This is the ugliest slide I have, I promise. I apologize for it. Is one more coming? I just uh, uh, tell you that. And what do I mean by Android components? Focus, so those are the names of the application, uses telemetry, which is implemented everywhere. It's needed. Um, let's see, what else? Crash reporting is needed. We don't have that for the Firefox CV1 because there's no crash system there. They have their own. Um, Toolbar is needed, but you won't see it uh, necessarily in uh, Logbox because Logbox, for example, doesn't load pages. It only saves your password. So I just wanted to mention some of them. It's not, it's not needed by heart to know them, but uh, to see how many there were in each individual product. If we are arranging them more nicely, we can see their options or um, their main uh, characteristic uh, as a group. So everything, um, here, it's again based on the reuse purpose and just uh, added when needed in the, in the new mobile apps. So with this in mind, our mobile team uh, of testers, which was around six, seven persons, had to deal with from one cute application to around six, seven ones. And um, I won't complain, we get two or three new people, so we ended up around nine but still was a bit of uh, new stuff uh, for us to handle. So we decided to reinvent ourselves too. So we started from the beginning what software testing is all about. You know, it's not necessarily to find bugs. It's not necessarily to show that the product is bad, but the other ways around to give the <coughs> owner of the product uh, knowledge, a status about the quality of the product, if it's okay to launch or if it's not. And I'm uh, not sure if you saw my joke. It is intentional. It's a jack of all trades, master of all the trades. It's not a bug, it is a feature. And why I'm saying that is because at the end of the day, <laughs> I really think that the testing uh, career, the testing job is one of the most creative because you do have a list of things to do, but you have to do what you really think is the most important part of it, testing in the right moment. You do have a lot of checkings to, to check, maybe to mark, but if you see that your application is crashing, there's no need to run 20 tests. You just have to do it, to, to report it back and block it, and that's it. So we are, 
at the end of the day, advocate of the users, because we are the ones to say, like, no, nobody will do this. Like, I'm not going to buy anything if I have to do 10 clicks. I want around two, three clicks max. We are engineers. We do code. I'm sorry to disappoint you. We do code. Uh, we are explorers. I like to say that a lot, not necessarily going into the woods, but going deep down in the application and see what really is there. As we are scientists, I like to do this a lot because whatever we do, we document, we do research, and we show our results back to the whole team. And that implies a lot of documentation too. I'm not very happy about that part, I have to admit. So mo some, I just mentioned some of the roles that we are doing to receive where we set our months back. We went back to the user stories. Again, everything was from scratch. We should forget about the old application or all the mobile web usage. Um, we had to collaborate more closely to the developers. The time frame was not very friendly for us to give us time to wait for a nice email or to give them, hey, I just ping you as a reminder for this. Uh, we kind of needed most of the documentation in time, so that meant a lot of um, communication at that level. We, uh, I mentioned there's some execute all the level of testing, but we passed by all of that. So we went back to the scrapbook of testing and we saw what from the non-functional domain applies to us, what from the functional domain applies to us. And I will uh, later exemplify all the techniques we use for each of the application. I also created a mini CV of test, leak, uh, of test leads. This is because people literally think the testers there are two kind of testers in most of developers' mind. It's either one that does manual work that just takes an application, just play around and gets money for that, or the one that does automation work, which implies coding, which feels a bit more like software development and you're looking like, hmm, nice guy, nice girl, she does a good work. So I wanted to tell you that, that like, as a tester view, you need to literally pay attention to the details. You have to have an analytical thinking back there. You need your independence. I would love for you to give us the documentation that we need. Unfortunately, I do understand you don't have the time for it. Um, ownership a lot because, again, you're kind of the only one around who plays with the application and you're the last one to say if it's okay or not to go on the market. So you don't get to have uh, doubts if it's okay or not. Some others are like creative continuous learning that we will mention a bit later. And as I said earlier, efficient communication. I know it's funny to see that at the conference on the main screen, but believe it or not, it's the hardest nowadays. So let's see how we tested Fennec. And I, this is a real picture of a Fennec. Unfortunately, in a zoo, there are two of them, and I was lucky enough to see them. So the old one. Implied, as I mentioned, the characteristics, and to test them, we looked at the loading time, compatibility, and you probably heard that a lot between browsers. We checked a few of the websites um, mainly used, I would say, in uh, US or English language. After that, we have a dedicated team that does only web compat, and they are running tests on the first 100 uh, websites in um, most 10, 15 languages used around the world. Reliability, because our Android application has to run with thousands of devices, I think. It's funnier and easier for iOS users because they have five devices, three operating systems that they can jungle with, and um, on Android, we just go crazy on that side. And um, for smoke beta acceptance, we run around 55 um, tests, which is almost daily run. Half of them are automated, so it's easier if something crashes on the side, we can easily reject the build, but the other one will do manually. And this is done, as I mentioned, daily for the nightly build. I didn't use the logo, neither the name for it, but we have a, and yet another version that goes out each day, and we call it nightly. For integration system, we looked at how our application behaves with the Android system, how our settings control the application uh, outside its uh, web browsing uh, function, and if something on Android sites will affect our application uh, while running. Regression, um, we mainly do it at each new build for beta or when something major landed and we create the regression around the, the patch to be sure it didn't affect anything else. And I mentioned automation. It was a huge part, especially for Fennec, because 
it reduced a lot of our um, effort there. It's funny because around five years ago, we developed our own um, tool for uh, automation. It would call, of course, Robocop, uh, because it was on, on top of Robotium from Google. But we love fancy names, so we went for full Robocop experience. Nowadays, we do adopt uh, the Espresso and I think UI automation for it, which comes nicely from Google, thank you, with Android. Um, the major uh, issue that we had is that to run a basic functionality test, which stands for BFTs right there, which should be run for each beta build, which is each week, it's around 450 tests. And I know <laughs> testers are capable, but they are also human beings. And at some point, you go crazy when you have to test 450 test cases each week, same test cases. So that's why we went on more on automation side. Um, one quick um, funny story about automating on browsers is that if you want to try to see if your page um, can use a button on the page, I think you have to go creative and put a, a full button page and see if anywhere you test on that page will literally press the button. That was the situation with Robocop. So tr trust me when I say a tester job to automate test cases is not that easy. We created so many unique pages for tests like this, like a text field or a button to see that our application does the same for no matter what um, the resolution loaded is. And um, I think I could um, go back to uh, developing web browsers back. Fennec iOS, the only difference that uh, comes with uh, the operation system was about the tools that we use and of course the limitation. We didn't um, <laughs> have access to implement lots of the plugins we have with uh, nor the um, privacy related features that we used to have on Fennec because of again the ecosystem on iOS and uh, we did use for automation their instruments tool and now we go fully with uh, Git. The novelty became when we had to build by night a new uh, browser for the Fire TV devices that Amazon has. And this was the moment that we decided that we can no longer create browser from scratch and we need something more faster. Because um, I think two, two years ago, Amazon had a little fight with um, Google, I think. I, I wasn't there in the room. But unfortunately, or fortunately for us, I, uh, the YouTube app didn't work anymore on the Fire TVs and they needed a browser to load YouTube videos. People do look a lot of videos online and not having an application for that would be a blocker for them. So almost by night, we created a browser for that. It was really basic. Most of the user experience was just to load YouTube videos and uh, be sure that it goes well. The, the funny part was that having Amazon as our client implied a lot of constraints in what we can test on how we can test and what the results going back to them would be. And especially who would, uh, would they let fix if it's something on their side or if it's something on our side, something that our developers can approach together with them. We didn't have access to all the code in their part, so it was a bit funky to, to work there. But our focus was to see again that pages load, that you can use it even outside the YouTube videos. And we had a lot of work to be done in the audio and the video side. Here come a lot of packaging size, the encryption parts, how many types of video you can have online, how many types we accept, how many Android accepts. But um, at the end of the day, it was a really fun job to do. Yes, there were people paid to watch online videos all day long almost, and also, uh, a harder part to take into account all the other things that you need, like a small remote to type your URL address or um, a 4K transmission or a regular one. I mentioned earlier Focus. Focus uh, was uh, the small browser that we created dedicated to privacy. We, at the beginning, we only had uh, one tab there that you could load. Well, if you went out of the application, it just deleted your history. Nowadays, we do have implemented multiple tabs and um, you can um, delete your uh, history whenever you can. It's not necessarily deleted when you exit the application. But uh, we wanted something fast, very secure for our users and something that will not have the legacy of Fennec, the old one, 
being so huge and so uh, consumptory of everything. So for it, we went from scratch. We deleted all the test cases, literally, that we have. We built it up everything from new. And we looked more on the non-functional testing part of how fast it is loading, the performance of the browser, um, the safety of it. Of course, all the tools on mobile side, but we had also special feature here, like private browsing. Be sure that we do not keep anything that is in the private browsing. We have enhanced tracking protection, which you can set each time you want to be uh, safely from the little stalkers from the page. And also like other features, DNS over the HTTPS. And um, those were the major um, focus that we have, <laughs> using focus for focus. Not necessarily pun intended, but uh, yeah. Besides that, again, we go to the reliability. We have a lot of devices that we needed to cover, lots of um, different users here. And uh, we knew that this kind of um, private-oriented user will be very, very angry if something was bad on that side. So that's why I mentioned that was our main, main job to be sure that everything is deleted when they exit the application and nothing is saved um, outside the, um, they, their work that wanted to be there. And as mentioned was the funny part that we didn't reuse any of the tests that we created. Reference browser. This I hope you don't want to install nor try. This is just the kitchen of the developer. You can play around it if you're uh, building Android, but uh, other than that is um, not necessarily how I, I want a browser. I was, why I'm saying this is I, I looked last night and it had like 40, six reviews already on the marketplace. And again, it's just a testing tool for us to dump all the code there and see if it's working. Um, we are not testing it much, to be honest. It is um, your job, I would say the developer's job or our developer's jobs to use it nicely when they do the unit test for their code and it's their playground to try everything they implemented. Um, here, Android components will be loaded or unloaded depending on the needed, and they will just use the unit tested to see if the application will crash or not with what they added, uh, if it's integrated with the system, and nothing else related to the other feature. Firefox Lite. This was the most cute one, I have to admit, because it's dedicated to the Indonesian market, so we only had one language. Can you imagine the joy of having only one language to test? not 100 or 200, how, do we, how many we have. But it was funky because, as I mentioned, got the screenshot. We didn't expect the Indonesian market to be such a fan of screenshotting everything. And it was just a function in the application. They could screenshot everything in the page, like not only the cute mobile screenshot that you see, but all the page of the article, for example, and share it with their friends. It seems that it's something that they regularly used for research or to send something to their friends and after that uh, learn more at home. And as I mentioned earlier, we shift our mindset. We are looking for partnership. We are looking for implementing something dedicated and not having everything in one app. So we took that function and we created Screenshot Go. Um, it's only taking screenshots of your phone, no matter how long the page you are in um, or not. The part that is um, really cute here is that uh, you see in, in, in practice the new mentality. As I mentioned, we don't want to keep screenshot go in our browser if it's a standalone application that people want to use even outside of their browser. Nowadays, the screenshot go can screenshot everything in your phone, like other application. It's not only a browser. So there is no need to keep a browser app with this function when it can be a standalone one. I think it was a really uh, mature gesture for us to take it out. Um, the difference in testing here, as I mentioned, was the localization part, less test, of course, um, on that side. And um, then in we introduced um, a bit more the low connectivity part or uh, even no connection at all. We wanted to see how our browser works more in no connection and uh, offline mode. I'm not gonna talk about PVAs, but they are a good thing and I like them. Last and not least, but not least, our new brand new feature, uh, <laughs> our new featured uh, browser. Um, I would call it 
My name is Phoenix, but I heard that we are not allowed it. We have a naming thing. So I'll introduce you as Firefox Preview. You can literally find it nowadays in the Play Store. Um, it was launched at the end of June and brings everything that I mentioned till now on stage. It's fully uh, based on Android component. It's fully based on GeekOview. Has nothing from the past. It's even shiny with the new logo. And if you remember the history of coding, when I mentioned the Xul and Java native UI, uh, is nowadays, of course, embracing Kotlin for Android. The major change for us was uh, switching from our engine from WebView to GeekOview, because it was a bit of legacy there and um, a bit of, um, I would say, fighting along for the diversity of the engine over there. You probably heard the edge felt on their side. But um, that's literally just to have a diversity of options and in a way to give people choices uh, when they can use that. And then I mentioned we used to have a really, really archaic process with archaic tools, but nowadays everything goes into GitHub. We even have uh, the release process over there. Um, so I think it's the easiest way we can build nowadays a mobile application of that. Starting from scratch on the developer side gave us the chance to play around here too. What was new introduced was the A-B testing. Till now, we didn't use that much in Fennec. In um, Firefox for, um, well, Firefox Preview, the new one, we would give to the users different onboarding experience. You either get one or two tabs to see how you first sync to your account or how to use the new application, and we tested that. Uh, I think it's a new trend around the marketing teams, and uh, I think it uh, will be used more and more in the future, so definitely something to be looking for. We wanted that our new browser be a bit more uh, shiny, a bit more user-friendly, so we emphasize more the user testing experience, how long it takes our users to log into uh, its account, or how long is it to make the browser um, the default one. It is this... Uh, new decision within the European Union that Android will give the choice of browser that you want to install. So it's definitely was important for us to look how many clicks a user have to do to set Firefox as their um, primary browser and if literally someone will do it with our actual process. Alpha testing is something that we are now doing with the Play Store, meaning that we have a, now a build that is public, it's not the release build, that's why it's called preview, but it's already in the Play Store, so you can be our alpha users, our alpha testers over there. Our emphasis was also on performance, on install. Coming as a new application, we wanted to see how easy it is, how fast people can, and how much of their data will consume or, or the memory usage on the phone. Localization was, again, brought to the hard part of having all the languages there. We had a lot of volunteers doing this work, so I'm really proud of that. Um, and give support for everything that is translate, translated or added. We do test that with their help, with the volunteers' work, and um, unfortunately it will be a bit of a uh, hard stuff, task to do if not. And we start it from scratch. We do not have, I think, like 20 test cases now face to fa 55 for acceptance testing, and um, the BFT suit is around 170 or something like that. Um, the funny part is that um, we started very late with automation on the new product because of that. Nothing was uh, necessarily decided, nothing was um, final call. So I do not recommend having uh, automation when you don't have a stable situation. And on top of all of these um, funny and cute mobile browsers, we will have also Firefox Sync, which has to um, make your uh, browsing history, your password, your everything from your digital life online be accessible across all the applications. And uh, with the growth that we, we saw last year and we focused a lot on uh, this one, this year it's one of our main goals, we looked at it very seriously to be able that again you are able sharing tabs. I'm not sure if you do that, but you can send a tab from the mobile device to your desktop. I do this all the time. I have no patience to read long articles on mobile, so I just send them. And whenever I open my browser, I have the article ready to read there. So that was um, 
uh, a hard task to test across all the devices, especially when you have like six or seven in your account and you don't even know which one is the name. I mentioned I was optimistic at the beginning that the future is bright. And uh, I'm optimistic when I said it will bring us more work. No matter if we are going to the digital side of things, like I mentioned, we have fridges or we have other uh, electronic devices that can speak to us nowadays. Um, going back to the basic and apply the principles will always help us there. And uh, don't let you scared by that. I used it uh, again with the fox because they are cute. No bias there, just, yeah, no, yeah, you're, you're just cute. And um, because at the end of the day, we, what we learned from this process is that you don't necessarily need to reinvent yourself. We cannot be the best security testers in two weeks. I'm sorry, it's not possible. We do can specialize afterwards in that. But we decided to do the planning accordingly to the needs of the browsers. If we needed localization testing, we did it only for uh, the Fennec one for Phoenix preview. Uh, we didn't do that for Indonesian browser. Automation versus manual investment, again, we don't have many new features on Phoenix, so it's a stable product. We do a lot of automation there. Firefox preview brings new stuff daily. Buttons change, change their places all the time. There is no need to do automation at this point heavily because it's just time invested to fix your test cases that fail or um, if the developers don't even notice you that something changed, you will have to go and see if it's a real bug or, uh, or it's just a, an escape. Do as much uh, as possible for the new stuff around and do as little for the older one was our approach for um, leaving Fennec behind. I'm uh, still mentioning as it's left behind, it's still alive. It's some kind of product that never dies, it seems. We wanted to kill it in March, but uh, it's still alive today. So I think maybe at the end of the year, uh, I'll stop talking about Fennec. Specialized, we did have to learn more about the privacy situation, about how to test securely, how to send data, what tools to, to use on the mobile products. And be lazy, again, like I mentioned, if you only need one language to test it, don't be an overachiever and test all the languages available. And yes, we are gonna make a pact with the future and uh, I'm looking forward for that, to be honest. Because we are talking about virtual reality browsing and also a lot of um, IoT things that you can do nowadays. I do invite you to try them on. IoT.mozilla.org will bring you more on, on that side. If you want to try your testing side and you find a, repo, oh, a bug over the internet, my last uh, action item for you would be to go to webcompat.org and report it. It applies for Chrome 2, it applies for Edge 2. So we don't uh, fix everything only in Firefox. We try to make uh, the web better for everybody. And hopefully we can fix the world with a bug at a time more and more. All the information, it's already on the um, public um, link for this. And everything about Mozilla mobile browsing can be found at the GitHub pages that the team has. You can find me at Ioana at mozilla.com. And if you look online, you're more social, ping me on Twitter at Ioana underscore cheese. Thank you. It's questions time. Questions if there are.